and welcome to the latest episode of Swan TV. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined today by Jeff Curran of Energy Live News. Hello, Jeff. Hi, Amy. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you. All the better for seeing your lovely smiley face today. I really do appreciate you taking the time to, to come and see us today, Jeff. Really do um, value your input, especially all the great things that you and Sumit do at Energy Live News and, and Future Net Zero. So did you want to, want to tell us a little bit about the two projects and most of the companies that you work for and what, what you're doing there? Yeah. So I'm commercial director for Energy Live News. Um, Energy Live News was started in 2010. Uh, it's a very long, drawn-out story, but it involves uh, it involves Arsenal and a suicide suicide. So get me on a pint of beer one day, and I'll tell you the full story. Um, uh, so that's our heritage brand. Um, it's a fantastic brand. We we set it up to yeah. You know, we liked energy as an industry. We think it's brilliant. However, energy is very much seen by people as a cost, fossil fuel, climate change. Uh, we like a positive. Uh, we like positive stories. We like a positive slant. So um, in 2019, Sumi and I took a look at it and went, we should set something else up. And um, he had seen a lot going on around net zero. I could see that we were doing a lot on Energy Live News, but it had really been very little to begin with, and it really shot up in 2019. Uh, so we came up with the idea of future net zero, and we launched that in 2020, uh, January 2020. Um, and uh, that's gone great guns. So launched very successfully, uh, is still going fantastically well. Energy Live News, monthly visitors is anything between sort of 60,000 and 120,000 visitors per month. Uh, Future Net Zero is up around the 25,000 to 30,000 a month. So it's very good. We're trying to grow that even more though, obviously. Um, Energy Live News has had a bit of a shot of a shot in the arm in the last two weeks for obvious reasons. Been a lot of people coming to see about energy. It's funny that. Um, don't know why. No idea. Um, uh, so uh, the, Sumi and I will say that we're self-confessed uh, uh, non-experts in energy. Okay. okay. And that's deliberate because a lot of the energy buyers and energy people out there in big end users um, and even small end users don't really know that much themselves about energy. So <laughs> we try to keep ourselves very much at that level. <laughs> and, and I think we've been very successful at that. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, so, yeah, so the purpose of today is really to kind of talk more about the, the sustainability side of things, climate change, what we can do for net zero yep. um, and, and focus more on that kind of second half of your of your bow, so to speak. So. What's your personal opinion about what governments globally are doing about climate change? Are we doing enough to tackle climate change? Uh, <laughs> well, you want a very simple answer? <laughs> no. Um, it's a bit more complicated, it, but it's no, we're, we're not doing enough. None, none of us are doing enough, okay? Um, uh, our government has signed up for targets, but we're behind. Uh, they're going to need to do something. Uh, you've only got to look at what's happening with energy at the moment. Uh, if you look at the, the great British summer, which never happened, the wind didn't blow. OK, so one of the reasons we've got this problem with gas is the wind didn't blow. Also, we don't have base load and we don't have base load because we're not using coal. However, two or three weeks ago, we used more coal than we had for a long time. And uh, that's not going to help us to hit our net zero aspirations of 2030 or 2050. So we're into this terrible position of uh, you're balancing between price and you're balancing between doing the right thing. Um, Sumit came out with an editorial, whether it was last week or the week before, which is effectively, if you're going to want base load, we should go nuclear. Okay, there's a, I'm not even going to get into that, but it, nuclear is, is, is low carbon. So, yeah. so you can, from a net zero perspective, do it. Okay, there are some issues about what you think about the waste afterwards. However, if you want base load, which you need, because when people switch on the lights, having watched Coronation Street or whatever, uh, sorry, not switch the lights on, you're not watching it in the dark, but yeah, to put on a cup of tea or whatever, <laughs> then we need we need base load, um, and uh, without that, and, and we don't have enough battery storage at the moment. So renewables, wind and solar, etc., great if we've got battery storage, but it's just not as far gone as we as we need it. So there's a and look, we're going to have even more electricity required because we're all meant to be going to electric vehicles, all right? In terms of us trying to act globally for the citizenship of this world, 
then yes, we probably do need to get our act together. Um, I, I don't know if I've got any ready solutions for that. Um, that's a, I came up with, I think someone came up with a stat, which something like 10 minutes of the world's sun on the, on the world um, is enough to either do, give enough energy for a day for the world or for a year. I mean, it's a, a, yeah. it's a very, whichever way, that's a massive, wow. you know, we just, we just haven't worked out how to take the energy from the sun and turn it into something which is much better for us. If we could do that, it'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're an inventive species, so hopefully we can do something. However, uh, what we're doing at the moment is not enough. Um, so just to catch uh, catch viewers up, the UK has got an ambitious target to be net zero by 2050 and yep. to cut greenhouse gas emissions um, to at least 100% below 1990 levels by 2050. Uh, so the UK is obviously, you've already mentioned, really, really forward thinking, really uh, innovative in a lot of those spaces, got these really ambitious targets. You've already hinted at some of the issues that might face, but what do you think are the biggest challenges to actually implementing emissions reductions okay the the there are a number but I, I, okay the, the easy one is heat yeah. okay yeah and we come back to gas most people have gas central heating so new builds are not meant to have gas boilers from 2025 onwards they're meant to have air air uh, air source heat pumps or ground source heat pumps well i've got a gas boiler i like a hot bath i like a nice warm house uh i had a gas boiler problem which cost me way too much and i'm really ought to change my plumber but he's quite a nice guy <laughs> um and i asked him the question and he said ain't gonna happen jeff he said uh those pumps aren't good enough at the moment there are too many gas boilers out there uh you could do new homes that's fine especially if you're going to do it with solar on their roof and you're not probably going to put a turbine but let's say you put solar on the roof you've got an air source or a ground source heat pump yeah, that's fine. You're, you're working from scratch. But for, you know, my house isn't that old. It's built back in 2005. It's got some great insulation, is, et cetera. So it, it does retain its heat. But my to change the gas boiler, there are no underfloor heating in there. So the difficulty is I'd have to have much bigger radiators. It'd be really expensive. Retrofit of that stuff, it's going to take forever. Heat's the big challenge. Heat's the really big challenge. I think something like 30 or 40 percent of of our emissions domestically are from heat so i think heat's a big one and my concern with as i said with the electric vehicles is that yes that you know you you you're taking out pollution but also you are making a cars effectively much more low carbon well you're still producing and have a lot of electricity you're going to produce i know three or four times the amount you need so it's a, it's a real difficult one. It, I mean, there are other benefits of electric vehicles, you know, driverless cars, eventually that would help maybe accidents, you're going to have less pollution. So that's great. But then you're going to have, you know, you're going to need to have even bigger baseload. So nuclear, okay. we come back, yeah, we come back to nuclear, we come back, you know, this is, problem is, is it's for any government, it's about, and the government, let's be frank, the energy suppliers are they're not nationalized they're private companies as are the dnos are as is national grid so you're you're effectively trying to take a market that's trying to also exist in a free market i think heat's the big one uh really do uh and, and you can look at europe and community energy um stuff and district heating schemes and and some of that's happening but i think the difficulty is we all live in our own individual houses um and you know we have a lot of old houses so a district heating can work where you've got a greenfield site you're building new houses and you can maybe think right well there's a whole load of the greenhouses over there let's ship in some of the the heat etc um yeah not not a, I, 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 and this is where i realized that it's all well and good to be a renter and a raver but actually in terms of solutions i'm not particularly helpful um <laughs> sorry uh, but I told you, I'm not an I'm not an energy expert in the true sense. <laughs> no, it's brilliant. I think uh, you made a really valid point there about heat in particular, because UK housing stock is either really old, kind of Victorian, or you know even older than that. So you've got a lot of like solid wall. You've got a lot of things that you can't improve on. And then with EV, I don't know about about where you are, but I know Norwich city centre. A lot of the housing stock is is terrace. 
you yeah. know, you're going to have, how do you charge? Well, oh, forget, forget Norwich. What about London? How are you going to do London? Oh, yeah. Apartments, yeah. flats. Yeah. How are you going to charge yeah. no, off, no off street parking. I'm very fortunate. I have a garage around the corner. So I can, I can do an electric car very simply. Um, if you live in the suburbs or, and you live in the rural, that's not a big issue. Um, it, and actually, I I would love if if you had it'd be great if people with garages and off off road off road um, charging facilities could then just they could be the petrol pumps for us all. So range anxiety could go out. But then again, you're into this thing of if it's a trickle down, well, you're going to be spending hours there anyway. So it it it, it you know people just don't understand. Oh, I've got electric charging for my car in the garage. Yeah, but it's going to take eight to 10 hours to charge, to get not even a full charge. You know, rapid charging. Uh, well, should we talk to, let's talk to DNOs and see if they can get lots of rapid charges out there. Uh, so, yeah, we've spoken a bit about, um, you know, this move towards insulation, better heating, EVs, et cetera. Uh, but have you got any advice or tips or, or anything that you and Sumit have kind of planned for yourselves that you could help individuals and businesses to live more sustainably? Anything that you guys do um, or things that, that Future Net Zero want to really be advocates for? Okay, so um, let me tell you a story. So we launched Future Net Zero in 2020. Um, that went very well. And in May, we looked at one another and went, that's great, aren't we so clever? But we're just talking the talk around net zero. We should be walking the walk. Okay, how do we do that? No idea. <laughs> Luckily, a, a young man called James Napier came into our life. He had a, a carbon footprint tool called Carbon Expert. Uh, we utilize that. We have done our own carbon footprint. We know exactly what we're doing from an impact point of view. Um, but then I tried to benchmark it and we found it difficult to benchmark against smaller companies, could only do it with larger companies. So the trouble is you're not getting a proper apples to apples. We look great, but it's not fair. Uh, so we came up with the idea, Sumit, myself and James sat down and we came up with uh, the idea of the future net zero standard. So um, his dashboard effectively is carbon accounting. So he's got a system which enables you to carbon account. We with the future net zero standard are uh, accrediting your carbon so we are the 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 carbon so it's carbon accounting carbon accreditation and then we're uh selling this uh and getting the support for end users through um uh through solution partners and those solution partners tend to be energy brokers and consultants because obviously they have a relationship with the people we want to get to um, and we've geared it specifically to smes it does is it by just getting your carbon footprint it enables you to see. So when I did it, what it was really obvious was home office and 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 our main office. Uh, we weren't we weren't on green tariffs for all of those. And then of course I could see my business miles for myself, Sumit, and Melinda, who was working for us at the time. And that was a that was big. And so we our action plan is to to get us onto you know truly green tariffs, but also to move ourselves to electric vehicles. Now I thought we would do electric vehicles further down. But we made a decision that we're going to do them a lot quicker. So we're we're waiting for cars to come either at the end of the year or, or start of the new year. Mm. But also what it does is it highlights where your carbon is. So at least by knowing where your carbon is, you can then uh, you go, well, there's the problem. OK, you know what the problem is and you can start making some money. Do we expect you to go net zero by next year? No, you've got 2030 and 2050. This is about a long-term way of helping you to, to, to get somewhere. But if you can't understand where you are within the problem, you're not going to be able to fix it. And that's what you've got to be able to do. And, and this has been brought up in the last couple of weeks with what's happening with gas and then obviously energy prices. We, we don't pay enough for energy in this country. All right. We're all going to have to pay more for energy. Okay. We are, the commodity as a cost is going to go up again, but we've been paying more for, for taxes. So, your levies for the DNOs for national grid for green levies, etc. So this is all going to carry on going up. And what we've all got to get into is well, actually, if it's going up, then the cheapest form of energy is not using it. Excuse me, I'm banging the table. Oh, uh, that is the message I try and get across, Jeff. It's like, yes, the cheapest energy is the yes. energy you don't use. Come on. Absolutely. And you're really good as an energy consultant because you get paid by, you know energy consumption but i do know that you go and say don't use it so you know and 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 it's true don't use it and 
there are lots of different, you know, turn the thermostat down from 20 to 18. Yes, okay, it'll be colder at times. Well, then you can put it back up. But if you always have it on at 20 or 22 or 24, you're going to be wasting energy. If you're not in a room, I have a loft that I don't really use, or not a loft, I have a, a, a top room, which is effectively a loft conversion, but it was done with the house. But I shut the door and I don't have the, the heating on in there. That's it. It's, shut. it's cold when you go up there, but I'm not in it. So don't use it. Um, okay, you should have showers rather than hot baths. That's not happening. I like a hot bath. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, turn the lights off. You know, they may be LED and therefore they're not using a, Turn them off. You know, if you're not in the room and no one else is in the room, turn the lights off. There are loads of really simple things that you can do. And don't think of it, if it's not about money for you, then think about it from the planet perspective, which is you turn it off, no one has to produce it, and therefore we are not using as much carbon. It really is simple as that. You know, I'd like to think that I'm a great believer that things should be simple, okay? And some solutions are just simple. Turn it off, don't use it, whatever, okay? That's uh, we. I think we have to accept that we all live in a world where it's about consumerism and and using stuff, et cetera. And, and sometimes you just got to think, no, I, you know, I, I'll have to make do, you know, I actually get my trousers repaired. <laughs> I can't sew. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's fantastic. A lot of these things that you've spoken about, they are very, very cheap or free to implement. You know, it is just about thinking more and using less and just yeah, Yes. Uh, more efficient with resources. And yeah. that leads me on to my last question perfectly. So do you think that countries generally, either the UK or globally, actually have enough resources and suitable infrastructure to make that move away from fossil fuels, namely coal as, as base load or you know, nuclear that you mentioned, and towards something more sustainable and, and renewable, perhaps? Uh, the difficulty is, okay, so you can look at the you can look at the east, okay, whether you want to look at China, India, whatever, okay? They're all creating, that they need energy because they are doing lots of manufacturing and producing lots of things. And they're doing that not just for themselves, they're doing it for the world. Uh, and they don't have enough power stations. So guess what? They're, produ- they're using, you know, not all of them, but some of them are coal-fired power stations. And, and before we get on our high horse, they're actually making the goods for us, okay? So let, let's not say it's down to China or India being bad, but they've got a need. But I think that is the difficulty. So I, I, do you know what? It's not about resources. I, it's about thinking and mindset. That's what it comes down to. It's all about thinking. I go back to the sun analogy. You know, ten minutes of ten minutes of the of the sun's ten minutes of the sun on the world, whether it's a day or a year. It, it's it, yeah. That's all we need. We just need to find ways of converting. We we need some sort of James Bond laser. <laughs> I know. Well, a few years back, there was something about putting um, reflective dishes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, nothing came of it. I think that tells you all you need to know about yeah. it as an idea. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fabulous. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's been right. great to be able to pick your brain on all things sustainability, carbon reduction, what we're doing. Um, great to hear what you and Sumit are up to as well. So thank you so much. Um, the final section of us on TV is lockdown and how have you got through lockdown and what is something that you can bring on and show us as something that's helped you to deal with the last 18 months something that's just meant something or was a bit of fun and um, to get you through the day right so I was going to come on with a bottle of red wine but I thought <laughs> that would just make me look like a total alcoholic um so that was my first thought uh, I then had a thought of three things which was the bottle of red wine a saucepan because in, in, I used cooking and I used, and, uh, let's be frank, I enjoyed a glass of red wine. Um, so, I, and actually there'd be white in there as well. So, uh, but I, I learned how to do a, a few more. Co- I'm very good with one pot, okay? I'm very good at making splodges. So, <laughs> uh, and, and wild mushroom risotto definitely is a splodge because it's all in one pot, okay? Um, but I'm very good at my my daughter loves my sausage pasta. So there's chorizo and chorizo sausages and ordinary sausages and other bits and pieces. So I was going to do the bottle of wine, the saucepan, and then the thing that I am actually going to finally. Oh, oh we can't wait for this. Pair of boots. Pair of boots. All right. I was not expecting that, Jeff. But yes, tell us about your boots. So 
I've worn them out, as you can see. Okay. <laughs> so these boots, these boots were made for walking. Yeah. I walked. So lockdown for me was walking. So I walked pretty much two hours a day. I'm very fortunate. I live in a, a lovely place called Harpenden. Uh, Harpenden uh, is north of London. It's a suburb, effectively. It's very, it's a commuter town. Um, I live literally 100 yards away from a common. Uh, I probably live two or 300 yards away from a golf course, which is on the common. And uh, they have a thing called Hartwood Forest, which is hilarious. It's not a forest. It's just a, a scattering of various different woods. <laughs> But I got into literally walking every day, whether and, and I went out in all sorts of weather. Uh, these boots did the walking. Um, and that was really useful to be in nature, just to be walking. I'd normally have the phone, so if anyone needed to get hold of me, but it was a really good way of just um, getting away from it all. Uh, and it's just a really good way of uh, letting your mind wander, etc., cetera, et cetera. So, Yes. I, I mean, I, would have, I must admit, I would have thought there'd be more people with boots on something like this. Is that, is that what's been the weirdest thing you've had shown? Oh, well, James has done a few. Personally, I had had uh, a chap bring on boxing gloves because he's oh, okay. taken up white colour boxing. There you which, go. Yeah, which I think was fantastic. I think there has been a real kind of, um, there has been, I think, more of a focus on health and wellbeing activities. Yeah. So people that have, yes, started running people that yep. attended a different kind of sport and um, doing some kind of like one-on-one -on -one fitness so yes in boxing he, got, he had, had boxing gloves he got um punch bag that kind of stuff yep. you with your walking boots i think that has been kind of the recurring theme yep. of getting outside in all weather yes. like you've said which is yeah, yeah. i think a lot of people wouldn't have done before yeah. absolutely well yeah when you're told you can only go out shopping and you've got to keep away from people or whatever. Well, the, the walking was the critical thing for me. Just the, it was the exercise and, and get, and also remember we did a lot of this, didn't we? We did a lot of zoom and teams thing. Yeah. We'd, um, so we, especially last year at this time, I was doing a lot of these, uh, calls as I, I could be doing three or four a day lasting anywhere between an hour and an hour and a half. So the minute I could, I would get out because it, you just cleared, cleared your head because you, you know what it's like being on screen for so long it's really tough yeah. um so yeah i'm pleased also we're getting out again so it's great um so yeah uh, I, I love the fact that you've got your boots the soles are falling off you've clearly given them a good healthy yeah. solid life uh, and obviously that's helped you and your fitness and your knee and everything as well so thank you so much jeff it's been great to right. meet you about all things energy all things walking lockdown and um, really loved it and uh, yeah big big supporters big fans of energy live news everything that you do future that's a very fantastic project so wishing you and Zuma all the very best of luck and well, I, I know, thanks for the opportunity we we love doing these sort of things okay so uh, if you ever want zoom it to come on and give you some other some other <laughs> nonsense then we're more than happy to to to, to help you out love it thank you jeff thanks so much well, bye see you later bye